Alright, so welcome back to another video. This short film that we're talking about today is probably the video I'm most proud of out of everything I've ever created. We shot this a year ago and it's finally out, so I'm really excited. So I'm gonna play it now and then we'll dive into the breakdown and the behind the scenes. And God created men in his image. As if our will to create is stemmed by him. Ever wondered why we're here? From the moment of creation to now, this world has been moved by those willing to dream. Those who hold a vision. Skateboarding is a form of freedom. 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 Skating with friends and smile every day. I am who I am and this is what I'm feeling at the moment. We all have our different ways of creation. From moving waves in space and letters in our mind to the creation of moments. And even when we don't think of ourselves as creators at all, we all want to create something even if it's just love. As time moves on, from the dawn of humanity to the industrial revolution to now, in the end, we are all here to create. So you can think of this video as sort of like a promo video to our new production company or creative studio. Um, Century 8. It's also an online store where we sell assets. So basically the entire budget for this video was for my own money. We were producing everything by ourselves, um, using our own gear and trying to rent as little as possible gear, trying to use natural light as much as possible, finding cheap locations or free locations actually, um, pulling favors, like whatever we could do to keep the budget down. The entire thing was two full shooting days and then another two um, half days, so three days total. So let's quickly get the gear out of the way. We shot the entire thing on the Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro, I believe. Then the two primary lenses were the Sigma 18 to 35, of course. Um, and then also the Zenitar 16 millimeter, which is a wide lens, um, like a vintage wide lens. Then we also shot some 16 millimeter film with the K3. So let's start off with the first scene, which is my personal favorite. It's all shot in my apartment, uh, which is the space I'm shooting in right now. Uh, we have a beautiful living room um, with a lot of light coming in from the windows, which was great, mostly because it's just beautiful, but then also um, we didn't have a big budget to rent big lights or anything. So um, using the already available beautiful lighting was a good choice. So you can see if we look at the wide shot, we have all of this light coming in from the outside and we had to be there at a very specific time of the day to be able to capture this kind of light. Because I live there then obviously I know when the best time to be there is. So if we would have shot this a few hours earlier, sun would have been in a completely different position um, and everything, like it just wouldn't have worked. It would have looked, this is just flat. So being in location at the right time of day uh, is crucial. So we have all of this light pouring in and we have a haze machine to really accentuate that and kind of diffuse the light and give it a lot of texture and ambience and also create some beautiful sunbeams. So pretty much whenever you have beautiful light flooding in like this, just turn on the haze machine for a bit and uh, magic is gonna happen. Also in all of these shots, the light is coming from the back. So it's backlit and which usually is the most cinematic because you have the shadow side facing the camera. I really liked the light in this shot, especially. We have this almost perfect triangle of light and it's shaping her face beautifully. It's also lighting up her eyes. And because we're on the shadow side, we're getting like so much depth, so much definition on the face here. Um, if this would have been front lit, it would have been very, very flat. We shot most of it and held a lot of it with the Zenitar, the wide lens, some of it with the Sigma. 
I mean, then we also had one shot that was uh, with Dana Dolly, and we also shot some film, which I think turned out the most beautiful out of all of these shots. So we have this vintage BMW parked in the parking lot. Um, we have all of the lights of the parking lot, the fluorescent lights. Uh, we couldn't really control that. And then inside the car, we placed nanolite tubes and we put that on a red color. And then we also hazed up the entire um, thing, like the interior of the car. And that created this beautiful uh, red glow that also contrasted really well with the fluorescent lights that were a bit on the cooler side of things. So for the main shot here, we have a push in with the Dana Dolly and the rest of the shots were handheld uh, with the Easy Rig. One thing I wish we did that we didn't really think of when shooting this was doing a wet down. And a wet down is basically when you just wet down the floor. I would have created a lot more um, depth to the image, would have created reflections and, you know, beautiful um, light bouncing around and just overall like more interest. So looking back at this, it's a bit of a shame that we didn't do it, but we're gonna know better for next time. So moving on to day number two, we only had this one location. I think we were there for around two or three hours maybe. Um, so that was a shorter day. We shot in this beautiful open lake. Um, sun was um, high up, but we had some clouds going on. So everything was pretty flat. We have our lovely model Noah painting and we shot most of it um, with the 18 to 35 handheld. Um, also, we, I think, yeah, we did have a few wide shots with the Zenitar, which I really liked. And we also shot a bunch of these shots on film, which turned out really beautiful. That's pretty much it. Not much to say about this scene. Day three, we shot on a rooftop with another vintage car. And this time, unfortunately, we A, couldn't location scout the place. Then also B, um, we're not able to be the, uh, the time that we wanted. So we basically had to front lead everything, which was really unfortunate um, because we wanted the background that was there because the other side was looking really bad. Um, but then we just weren't on the right side uh, of the sun. So uh, we, we were there on, on the sunset and we should have been on sunrise. Um, again, we just couldn't make it. So we did have a nice background, but everything was front lit, um, which was a bit of a shame because when you front light things, they tend to look flat and it's hard to create depth. Um, but a lot of these shots didn't make it to the edit anyways. So um, not a big loss, um, but that was a bit, uh, yeah, should have been there at the right time of day. There is this one shot um, from inside the car driving and this one we were able to get right. Um, so you can see the sun is just coming in from like behind her, we're shooting into the shadow. We're getting all of this depth um, of this side of her face is in shadow, but then we have this really beautiful rim light or like edge light um, going on. And then also the beautiful lens flare. Um, so I, I really, really like this shot. So after the rooftop, we went to the skate park. We had maybe like half an hour of the sun um, sitting just at the right place. And we also had a pretty nice sunset. And then after that, sun went down. Um, then we shot a little bit into the blue hour, um, also mixing some red lights from the uh, nanolite tubes, which contrasted really nice with the blue skies. What we didn't know was that sunset is apparently everyone's favorite time to go to the skate park. So we had a bunch of annoying kids um, driving around and getting into our shots. So that was a bit of a challenge. We have these two portrait style shots just pushing in really fast with the wide lens. Um, I really liked that because it gave the, the footage um, this whole scene a lot of energy, which it needed because, you know, skating and it's all energetic, fast, um, action-packed. So I thought these shots really matched well with the overall scene. Moving on to day four, this was actually a few weeks later on. The model is a really good friend of mine and the apartment belongs to one of her friends also. So again, managed to get a free location and a free model. Once again, the time of day and sun position were crucial for this scene and we made sure we were there on the right time, which was sunset. Same as the first scene on the first day, um, sun was shining in, pouring in from the windows. We had a little bit of phase going on. Again, trying to stay mostly on the um, shadow side. Um, there's this close up, which I really like. 
Um, you can see all of the atmosphere that the haze is creating in the background there. And then we also have some shots um, on film. And then these shots um, are very contrasty. We have a strong satellite going on, splitting the face in the middle. We have a very defined, very strong shadow side. And then the other half of the face is lit from the windows. Um, that creates a very dramatic effect. It's not the most flattering light. Usually you'd want the light to wrap around, right? That's what we mostly try to do. Um, but then there's situations where side lighting can be super cinematic and beautiful, um, like in this case. And then almost the last shot of the video is this shot of him painting like the lens, supposedly. Um, obviously we have a picture, not a picture frame, but like a glass uh, from a picture frame um, just in front of the lens. And then he paints on that. <laughs> So this is how we made this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this breakdown and learned a few things. If you have more questions, leave them down in the comments below and I'll try to get back um, to all of you. And if you want to see more of these videos, make sure you subscribe. Um, I want to create more breakdowns specifically on shoots that I'm actually involved in, things that I shoot, like real life scenarios. I think that's missing a lot on YouTube. So I don't want to speak about things Theoretically, I want to show you guys actual examples uh, from shoots that I do. So if you want to see more of that, subscribe. And just before you go, if you want to connect, you want to shoot me a message, um, talk a little bit, see some of my behind the scenes, um, then make sure you follow me on Instagram. It's at Yuval A96. And that is all for this video, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one as well.